Hello, faces. Hi. It's my great pleasure to participate in this TEDx Youth events because uh, this is actually my first time that the average uh, age of the audience is younger than me. Because I was, I, I am the youngest professor in Westlake University. I like the words youth, right? Okay, so today I will talk about something about the photo takes. Yeah, you see, why photo takes is important? Last year is the transition year that we are switching the conventional energy, which is limited and cause some pollution, to renewable energy. If you buy Tesla stock, you will definitely feel that, right? I, I bet the price increased from $200 to $3,000. And then uh, to reach the goal of carbon neutrality, it's really urgently needed to develop the renewable energy. So among these renewable energies, solar energy is kind of free, and then we, we only need to utilize 0.01% of the solar energy can satisfy people every day use. So we will ask how to utilize, how to transform the sunlight to electricity. So you call, we need a device called a photovoltaic device or solar cells. The, you can see this from the figures that this black color, uh, the blue color one is solar cells. So photovoltaics can convert the light to electricity by using the materials called semiconductor materials has the photovoltaic effects. So I want to give you guys some physics class. I, although it, this is in the weekend, you guys may not like it, but I want to illustrate it briefly. So you have a semiconductor materials, and then if there is a photons, I mean the light, you absorb it, and then you get electrons and the holes, and then put the wires that can select the holes and electrons and connect it together, you will get the current. That sounds easy, right? Uh, so for simple, I using uh, the bucket feeding uh, water wheel model to further illustrate that. You can treat the incident sunlight, the photons, as a rainfall. And then the rainfall keep keep going into the bucket, you will have a pressure height, right? And then you turn off the faucet, turn on the faucet, you will get water flow. That's the current. And then you, the water flow can feed the, uh, the water wheel and then generate the power. It's similar as the solar powers, how it works. So let's, let's take a look. What kind of materials can make photo takes? So Traditionally, silicon and crystalline silicon and amorphous silicon are the first generation. And then people start to find new groups, like three, five group materials, two, six gr groups, and then the third generation, which is I'm working on organic and the photo, uh, on the pro sky photovoltaics. So I will talk about this uh, in detail. So the single component semiconductor are the first generation. The development of the photovoltaic materials is uh, actually the same as the development of the semiconductor. People at first uh, investigate and discover the single component semiconductors, which is silicon and the germanium. So silicon is actually we are using everywhere. In your cell phone, your microphone, they are everywhere. And then they commercialized just uh, 60 years ago as a photovoltaic. And then now uh, they developed a lot. So they start to find some double component semiconductors. So first is gallium arsenide. This is a very perfect materials, has the highest power conversion efficiency, but the cost is very high. It costs a thousand times than silicon. So nobody will use that, except they didn't care about money. So who will use that? The space ship, right? Because they, they have a lot of money. And the, the care about efficiency is more than the cost, right? So you can see the gallium arsenide solar cells and the space strip, sometimes Shenzhou something like that. 
And the catalyst and Tyler is also a double component. It's totally different with Scali Arsenal. It now has the highest efficiency, but the highest, has a very low cost. That makes the first solar company become the most profitable solar cell company all over the world by using this cadmium and telluride. So researchers who think outside the box, above, above this, they are all natural product. So people start to, uh, to study, investigate the artificially synthesized materials. Organic materials and the perovskite materials. So perovskite materials is in Chinese called gai tai kuang, but it doesn't have calcium and titanium. It contains carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, etc. It's synthesized by researchers. So I'm working on that. So compared with the traditional silicon photovoltaics, it has very good performance. And the cost is lower, it's the, actually the lowest photovoltaic materials. However, the lifetime is very short. Compared with silicon, has 25 years stability, our perovskite sky material can only survive for 10, 10, uh, 1,000 hours. Right now it's 10,000. So stability is a critical issue. And then to overcome this issue is quite challenging. So I'm stuck in the, the box. Until one day, I start to drink coffee with my colleagues. <laughs> so, like coffee is also like a material science. Different method you synthesize, you will get different taste. Like materials, you change the synthesis food, you get a different property. If you do the light roast, the coffee is, uh, tastes like sweet and sour. If you uh, do the dark roast coffee, uh, like Starbucks and peas. They will have the very bitter flavor, which I didn't like. It. And then there are also different kinds of coffee. I like Dopio. I like, I uh, know, oh I just finished uh, Dopio with Tom. <laughs> so one day my colleague asked me so coffee can fresh the people's mind. So how about we do something to fresh our solar cells to make this stable? So we go back and search the key component of coffee, which is caffeine. We're very excited that caffeine is basically has contains the functional group that we have proved that can stabilize the perovskite solar cells. So we mix the caffeine into the perovskite, and then we excitedly found that the efficiency increased a lot. And then we bake the solar cells at 85 degrees C. The reason we bake at this number is that coffee tastes the best at 85 degrees C. <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, 85 degrees C is the standardized measurement for solar cells. And after adding caffeine, the, uh, the stability increased a lot. Over thousands of hours still alive. So think also about sometimes it makes your research exciting, interesting, and then you will enjoy it. And then, you think the story ends? No. Apart from caffeine, I try different sim similar structures, namely cell, cell phthalate and cell bromine. They are all the major products of coffee, tea, and chocolate. And I compare these three onto the perovskite solar cells. I'm sorry. My uh, Tom, that cocoa is not the best. <laughs> this time, the Chinese team wins. <laughs> so, selflin has the best power conversion efficiency, and then we made at, at that time is the highest efficiency of the solar cells. So, I think outside the box again and get a better results. So, when you do research, think outside the box. Thank you. <laughs>